Well, what's going on, everybody? Uh, a customer dropped off this uh, Kawasaki Bayou 300 the other day. She's pretty rough looking. Been out under the trees for a while. Whatever. He said uh, it wasn't running right. And they parked it like two years ago and ain't been started since. So we're going to pull the carburetor off. And we'll get the seat out of the way. Jerk the carburetor off and uh, drop it in the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, see if we can do a tune up on this thing and see what we can do. Okay, the first thing we're going to junk out is the uh, air box. We'll get that out of the way. Ooh, it is nasty. Whatever. Normally there's two 10 millimeter screws. One right here, one right there. And then there's a third one down here holding on the voltage regulator which they've done pulled them out, so it looks like they done tried to get in here. Then you pop this little boot off right here. It's got two clamps, loosen them with a Phillips screwdriver. And uh, this little hook deal for the battery likes to grab onto the box, but get out like that, check your air filter. This one's, the filter element's good, but the plastic deal's bad shape. Here's the boot, connects from the air box. This thing is heck to put back in. But uh, we'll get our carburetor out right here. Let me turn the gas off. And uh, fuel line's over on this side. All right, right here's our fuel line. It's running right there. We'll get it unplugged. It's not on there too tight. Okay, it's off of there. See it right there. Okay, we'll come around on this side. We should have a clamp. I can see it in there, up in, in there on the intake. Let's see if I can get y'all a shot of it without getting gas all over the camera. But let me grab a Phillips here. And uh, we'll loosen that clamp up. This thing can be pretty tricky. When I always put them back, I put them at the bottom. I mean, they're, sometimes people put them at the top. But what you do is you loosen that clamp up right there. Then we'll come back around here. Take your hand, pull the carburetor loose, like that right there. On this side, you got you can either remove the two loosen the ten millimeter nuts. That's what I'm gonna do because they're already loose. And uh, let's see if I can get a shot of this. We're gonna pull the throttle cable, loosen it up the top nut. You should be able to just hinge that. You might have to unscrew that bottom nut off of there if it's easier for you. But yeah, just pull it out like that right there. Lift the cable up and it comes out. Then you can actually, I think, take the carburetor out this side. If not, just turn the thing sideways. Okay, it's a 12. Get a 12 millimeter wrench, open in, and get on that plastic choke mechanism. And you should be able, just be careful, this thing breaks real easy. To get around there and unscrew that dang choke mechanism thing. Can be a booger to get to. Yep.
This one, I feel like somebody cross-threaded it. Okay, yeah, you get it out like that right there. Choke plungers on the end. You should be able to grab your car battery. You might have to unplug a vent line. This one didn't have one. So where there that is, we'll move over to the table and get the bottom pulled off. All right, I got my car brighter in a vise over here. I got me a good Phillips because these are bad about stripping out. And, uh... Just pull out the four screws here. You don't want to squish this thing in the vise either. Just get a light grip on it. Nothing crazy. Give a good push down on them screws. And I noticed this deal was supposed to be under them two screws. Dude, that one looks kind of... Okay, it come out. It was mangled up. All right, we'll pick the bowl up off of there. And dump the screws out. Right here is your rubber gasket. Use that on every mess with them. You can see we got some deposits down there in the bottom. We'll just drop that in the ultrasonic cleaner. How it is. I ain't going to mess with this gasket because I don't want to break it. Because this ain't a rebuild. It's just a cleaning job. And then we got our pin right here for the float. You push on it a little bit. Use something small. I'm going to try this zip tie out right here. Yeah, that worked. Push it through. Pull the pin out. Just set it right there in the bowl. Take the float out. Right here is our needle valve. You always check this little button right here in the top of the needle valve. Make sure it returns up, because if it don't, it's going to leak gas the whole time. And then make sure the end's in good shape, a little rubber tip. This, you probably don't want to put in your ultrasonic cleaner if it's like mine. I got the heater on, and I don't think you should put this in hot water, but you can see that floats no good, because that one's got gas sitting in it. That's probably been the problem the whole time. And uh, luckily, I have a spare carburetor over here. It's not a new one. It's the old one they took off that's for parts. And we might have to take these two and build one. But okay, that float shot. So we're going to get another one of those. And... We'll switch to a flathead here. We'll get our jets out. We'll start with this jet right here. You want to remember where these go, but most of the time they'll only fit in a certain spot. So we get that one out. And I can see through it right now to the light, but I'm going to drop it in there. Then this one right here actually is like two jets in one. The top piece will come out like this right here. And uh, I can see through it good. And then we'll get, I'll just start it back in here so I don't mix it and the other one up. I got my pair of pliers here. I'll grab this other one and try not to tear it up too bad. Unscrew it. If you look down this thing, there's tons of little holes and those like to get stopped up. You can take a little strand of wire and poke through them and I'll drop it over there. Okay, down in this hole is like, most of the time I don't ever get these out, but I'll give it a shot. Here, I got my small flathead screwdriver. Put it down in there. Give a good hard push. Twist, yeah, it come loose. So we'll get it out of there. Now this is an aftermarket carburetor, I can tell from China. 
that somebody's put on here is a lot better if you go with the originals but the aftermarket stuff's pretty much cheaper than a rebuild kit and a lot of times i've took the aftermarket carburetors apart and used these pieces like these jets and floats and stuff and put in the original carburetor or put the original carburetor stuff in the aftermarket carburetor if the body was rotted out real bad. Okay, normally on a clean job, I never take the top off. Especially if you grab it with your finger and it moves up and down good like that. But I'll take it off just because we was having uh, the way they was talking, it was acting before they parked it, it was wouldn't rev up. So we'll take it off and make sure the needle is in the carburetor, right? Because I've seen tons of them where the spring in here is messed up. And the needle actually comes out of the uh, slide. Okay, there we go. But yeah, I'm pretty sure... The problem was a bad float. Normally floats don't ever mess up. It's rare that the float messed up like that. But, you know, the aftermarket stuff like this. They probably ordered this for $25 off eBay. And uh, some of them are good and some of them are bad, you know. But, hell, original car is like $200. But yeah, you can see that's already bent right there. Straighten it back up. Okay, right here's the spring. Now you don't have to put none of that stuff in the ultrasonic cleaner. Now right here is our slider. You check the rubber on it, make sure there's no holes in it. If there's a hole, it won't run right. Then the needle, if you raise it up, you see it's actually got this black plastic thing that goes over it and then when the spring when the spring goes on there it goes down like this and catches right on them little hooks and that keeps this needle from raising up out of this plastic deal and flying in the top of the carburetor so we'll put it back in the in there it goes in the center hole not the outside hole But yeah, we'll drop it back in there. Drop the plastic deal with the ears going down. And drop the spring. Like I said, I won't put this in the ultrasonic cleaner because it's plastic and rubber. I don't want to cause deforming it, but I can tell it's melted right here where the carburetor kicked back and actually caught fire at one point in time. So we'll probably replace this out of the other carburetor or put all the good stuff in the other carburetor so let's lay that there set this to the side and let's take apart the other aftermarket carburetor I wish they'd have brought me the original make sure the slider slides good okay it's sliding it doesn't look melted at all in this one and we'll pop the bottom off this one see what the issue is see a lot of times these aftermarket carburetors you don't really know what you're going to get so if it had jets for like a 450 or a 400 articat or something because these fit articat too then it wouldn't run right on a 300 Or if it was too small. So we'll pop the bottom off. Okay. That one's actually in a lot better shape than the first one. Not too dirty in there. But yeah, they don't look bad. And here's the seal. This one stayed on the bottom. We'll put it back in there. So it ain't, it ain't broke or nothing. 
Now, if you get OEM carburetors, this stuff is a lot better quality. But, uh, see, it's already deformed, so they don't want to go back in there. That's why I don't pull them out. But we might use the other bowl because uh, that seal's jacked up. Check our float here. Push the pin out. And uh, I actually use this needle off the other one. Get that pin out of there. Wind it down. Needle valve looks good. And the rubber's a little dried out, but this one ain't had gas in it in a while, so. But yeah, that float, that float looks good. I don't see any signs of gas being inside of it. See how this one side's discolored and there's gas inside of it. And uh, we'll check the jet. On this one, I see some dirt in there, a bunch of red clay. I'm probably going to go with this carburetor. See, it looks like it's in a lot better shape. I'll put all these jets in the bowl off of that one. So that way, this time I'm not going to unscrew that one. I'm just going to take it out with the pliers. Just uh, splitting it into two pieces. A little dirty right here. Right here is the most problems. This gets stopped up and it won't rev up. Or if it gets water in the gas. Water in the gas, it'll idle but it won't rev up. We're getting lucky today. I think jets are coming right out. Right there's a small one. And uh like I said I ain't gonna take top part. Well I guess I will put it in the cleaner. That one over there. And right here on both of these is your air fuel mixture screw. I usually Screw that thing in. You'll actually see the tip of it sticking out right here. Loosen it about. I do mine about three turns. It's about flush with that hole in there. And uh, that seems to work right. If it won't idle right, you might have to uh, get you a little bit short screwdriver and or take the carburetor back off and adjust it some more. Now, if it has the problem where uh, it idles, you turn the screw in all the way and it will finally idle, and then you hit the gas and it idles up real high and crazy. Most of the time, your idle mixture screw is either too loose. It's letting out too much fuel for an idle, and it's actually flooding it. That could be from the uh, float adjustment, too. But yeah, that one is a lot cleaner. Better shape. The needle is uh, attached good. The bottom's not melted any. So we'll put it over here. And yeah, we're probably going to go with this body. Because it looks a lot better. Always make sure there ain't nothing down in there. If there's like one piece of grit down in the where the float needle valve goes, it I mean a spider web, anything in there, it'll keep leaking gas. Let's and uh, this one also see a dirt dauber down in the vent hole on this side. The vents both connect together and come out right here. So uh, we'll get over here and drop it in the ultrasonic cleaner. So right here is my ultrasonic cleaner. I picked this thing up the other day at Harbor Freight. 
I think it's a 10 liter. Maybe we'll drop that in there. I'm using main green in it right now. And it is hot. So here's the bowl with all the jets in it. And uh, I'll drop that in there. I don't know. Y'all drop a comment if y'all think main green is good to use on carburetors. It's my first time trying main green. I tried LA Totally Awesome the other day and it turned the aluminum white. So I might switch over to pine saw after this. I see a lot of people on there is using pine saw. But uh, we'll kick this thing on and give it 15 minutes. And I know the microphones are going to hate it. And then uh, we'll come back and get it out. So guys, it's been about 20 minutes. And uh, I'm going to get the stuff out of the ultrasonic cleaner. Turn the heater off on it. This thing's hot. I let them sit a little bit longer after it shut off. So uh, set it up there like that to drain. Ooh, that thing's smoking hot. And uh, I'll get them out of there. Ooh. Yeah, it looks brand new now. We'll blow everything out with the air. And uh, slap it back together. Okay, I got it back in the vise. I got my air hose. I'm just going to go through here and uh, blow out each hole. And uh, make sure they're cleaned out good. Draw that uh, cleaner out of there. I get my jet. I'll blow through it. And go through each one of those. That thing does a, do a good job on the jets. Makes them look brand new. Do a light test, make sure you can see through them. And uh, go ahead and blow this cover off. And then needle valve. And I dip this in there just with my hand for a second and run it in the ultrasonic cleaner. So whatever, we'll uh, get to putting these jets back in. I always start with the big one. Put it in there first. Run her down. Just snug it up here. And then uh, this one, that's a little bit longer, small one. Goes right here down in this deep hole. Take your little screwdriver and just screw that sucker right in. Then you got the last one right here. Goes right here. Now, I did not pull out the auto mixture screw, but I will go back and make sure it's still set right. I'll blow, well, I ain't gonna blow through it, there's a spring in there, but I'll screw it in. One. Ooh, three, I guess, right there. 
that's probably more than three, but all right, the bottom of this kind of it's still got a little grime in it. That'll make sure and blow the bowl out. Ooh, seal about flew out of there. Always make sure this overflow is unstopped. Alright, that looks a lot better. And, uh, like when I got this full in, somebody had kinked this hose coming off here because it was leaking gas. Don't ever kink the hose if it's leaking gas because what will happen is it, will, it won't drain out the overflow tube. It will fill up the carburetor, fill up the air box, and potentially fill up the motor with gas in the crankcase. And it could cause a lot more damage than you losing a little bit of gas. So don't ever plug your overflow. See, it's, if it's leaking, it's leaking for a reason. That's saving your engine from overfilling with gas. And it could be dangerous. It could blow up, you know, if there's enough gas in the crankcase. Oh, man. But, yeah, you put your little needle valve back on there like that. And just sit her in there. And the longer side of the floats go facing, uh, go facing upward or to the top, not to the bottom. Grab your pin, put it back in like that. Get the bowl here. And this little slot right here that you can see is going to go over this stem sticking up. Slap it back on there. And then uh, the four longer screws with uh, these have lock washers. Go, and then this goes like that right there. Drop your four screws in there. Like that. And, it's, and then these are a little bit shorter. They go on this side because the longer ones are for this plate right here. Drop them back in there. And uh, try to keep everything lined up. You always want to go around and uh, start all of these down in there before you tighten them up that way it'll uh align everything a lot easier if you tighten one up then try to screw the other ones in it's a little it gets everything out of whack just tighten them up good and snug like that right there And uh, we should be good there. We'll flip it over and put the uh, top back in it. Said we got our thing. This deal will only go in one way. So, uh, see, like, it won't go in this way because the bulge on this side is too far. So you bend it around. And get her lined up. And look down in the carburetor and take your finger and put the needle down in the center hole because it'll try to go beside it. And everything should just fall right in. You shouldn't have to push nothing in there. This deal, make sure the spring goes around the center. Drop it on there. And then the four shorter screws are gonna go in the top of it. Like that right there. And uh, screw them in, kind of try to give them in all snugged up evenly. And 
dang rain's coming in now. And uh, that's how you disassemble and reassemble carburetor. Now I always do a little test. And uh, you can blow in this right here, the fuel inlet with the carburetor upside down. And no air should go through. Turn it up right. Air goes through. And that, that should always work. Now you can use your air hose if it ain't got too much pressure. But uh, make sure the throttle moves. That one's kind of sticky. So we use that other carburetor. Make sure your slider slides up and down. Getting smooth. If it's getting stuck, something's wrong. Now we'll put it back on the, uh, we'll get it put back on there. Okay, I'm gonna put my chuck cable in there. I'm gonna give my carburetor a twist. Two twists around like that. Now, I don't recommend doing that if you can reach yours with your fingers. I just had a lot of trouble out of this one, so I did it that way. And then take your wrench. Just snug the thing up. You don't want it real tight because uh, it'll break real easy. Then uh, put the rubber cover over it. And now, snake the carb, get the fuel line out of the way, and snake the carburetor back up through the plastics here. And get it back up in there where it goes. Okay, we're gonna get the uh, throttle cable put back on here. Hopefully, y'all can see it. Whatever, we'll put it in the throttle mechanism first. Put the end of it in there. And this stuff takes some patience. Okay, you put it in there. The little eye through the hole. It'll go right in there like straight and twist the carburetor up straight and uh, screw the nut back down on the top. It's 10 millimeter. Wrench. Just snug it up. Then take your carburetor. Make sure your throttle works good. And then plug it back in the engine. Make sure it goes all the way in. Good and flush. Straight up and down. Then we'll come back on this side. And we'll take our uh, fuel line right here. Plug it back on the carburetor and it's good if you add an inline filter this one don't have one but it does have a pretty good kink in this line but I think it'll be all right so get that plugged up and I'll grab a Phillips tighten the uh, clamp back up right here between the engine and carburetor all right, I got the clamp tightened up, and now we'll do a uh, now we'll do a test run, and and I'll turn the fuel on. Wait a few minutes for it to fill up the float bowl. This is when you check and see if the float's gonna get stuck or not. Sometimes you gotta tap on them a little bit. 
much. I don't see no fuel pouring out, so uh, we should be good there. We'll do a start test, see if it'll run. Go ahead and choke it. Oh, there's the fuel running out. Yep. Just tap on it a little bit. Well, it slowed way down. I'll crank it up now. All right, now give it a choke. All right, we got plenty of fuel. What the heck? She ain't wanting to start. Hit it with a little bit of starting the fluid that's in the back. Uh, it caught on fire. Uh, I'm going to pull the spark plug out and check it. Alright, I got my socket on there. Looks like a brand new plug. I'm hoping we ain't going to have no fire and spark issues. But that's possible with these old Kawasaki's. Okay, she is covered in fuel. Let's see what kind of spark we're getting out of here. Looks so like we're getting plenty of spark. Oh man, the wire just fell right off. That ain't good. Don't look in here. There's a screw in here. Somebody stripped the end of the wire thinking that was a problem, so we have to clip that off where there's it's flush. Uh, I'm gonna clip the tip of this plug wire off. There we go. You want it to be flush like that right there. Then you take the uh, spark plug boot and actually thread it in the end of the plug wire. That's how it's supposed to go. Yeah. It'll get tight once it gets all the way up there. Okay, thread it in. The spark plug looks to me like the end of it needs opened up just a little bit. There we go. <coughs> that way I can get a good spark. Let's try the spark test one more time. See what we're getting out of here. Yeah, we're getting good spark. The starter don't sound too good. So get this screwed back in there and uh, 
We'll try it again. Ah, uh, let's try to crank it up again. I'll put the plug back in there. Yeah. It's running. Don't smoke. Don't run the best I've seen. Oh, aftermarket carburetors. Pop his fuel line back off and see what this gas looks like. Well, I don't see no water in it. So I'll plug it back on there. We're getting plenty of flow out of there. Choke it. Looks like either the intake's leaking or the intake valve might be a little sticky. But uh, it's probably good. I'm gonna turn this knob down here and control the idle about a hair. It ain't running good, but it's running. Probably about the best it's going to get with that aftermarket carburetor. It ain't perfect, you know. But, uh, I slapped the airbox and everything back in it. it ain't leaking gas, so. She's running. Might be a little cold nature too. After it gets warmed up, it does a little better. That's how it's supposed to start right there. Okay, well, let's put the air box back in there. All this air box is uh, it's a little tricky. So you gotta drop it down in here, and you want to put the voltage regulator which is hanging back on the side of it and it kind of won't fit in here while the uh, air box is going in so you got to reach up under the plastics over here and hold the voltage regulator up there while you put the bolt in and uh, I'd show it on camera but I just can't get to hold the camera and use all my hands so get that bolt started. Then leave these two out. That way you can scoot it back. And take your boot right here. And kind of finagle it down through here. 
and push it backwards up on the air box is what you want to do. Push it back up on the air box and kind of twist, twist it around straight and get it up on the carburetor. And then the whole air box, you shove it back forward, it'll put it up on the carburetor some more. And then uh, drop your two 10 millimeter bolts in the air box. Right there where they go. Like that. And get a 10 millimeter socket and extension, tighten all that up. I get them tightened up, then grab this clamp, spin it around where it's uh, easy to get to. Make sure all this stuff's good and straight, how you like it, where it's on there good, not leaking no dirt, air in, tighten your clamps up with the screwdriver. Make sure it's up on that carburetor good. Tighten all the clamps up. I know this is a little mangled up, but uh, it was like that. The customer wasn't worried about getting that fixed, so uh, let's put it the best it'll go. Put our lid back on. And uh, there we go. All right, make sure it runs. Still runs good. It'll actually run better with the box on because it cuts down the flow of air going in there. I think it needs some fresh gas put in it too. I would do a driving test, but it's pouring rain and the headlights don't work. Yeah, everybody like and subscribe and help me get to 1,000 subscribers. And, uh... We're going to see what we do. Check out both channels, or all three channels. There's Dang, uh, Lansdale's ATV, not a repair channel. And there's uh, the Lansdale Kids. That's my kids. And the Dustin Lansdale channel. All right, everybody, peace out and have a nice night, nice morning, whatever time you're watching this video.